Hey, what's up guys? It's Oakley, and I am back after a bit of a lull. I've been having just really a, a tough quarter, very difficult week, very stressful. I was at the library basically every day, coming home at 1 in the morning, waking up at 7, uh, lots of exams, lots of career fairs and stuff to go to. So I hope you've been having a little bit of a better time, an easier time. Anyways, in the meantime, what's been going on on the Total War front is uh, I had run something earlier where I was talking about the beta for um, patch 9 and actually the patch 9 has finally come out so I'm gonna go ahead or I did go ahead and uh, play a couple rounds online and I'm gonna be showing those to you here now the main changes to patch 9 are gonna be um, some balancing of units they change attack defense uh, melee stats for various troops spacing a little bit but the most important is gonna be the price differentiation so it means no longer we would be seeing um, armies comprised solely of elite units uh, it's gonna be a much more of a mixed bag I also noticed when I was playing multiplayer here that uh, you're gonna be seeing a lot more varied maps and different maps that haven't been playing before so for example this one here we're gonna be seeing something that looks like Stonehenge right in the middle of the map so that's very cool I'm glad to see these in the mix um, the old maps that we were playing on were restrictive and uh, I really like the details on these Anyway, so far, patch 9, people have been really happy about it. I haven't been able to test too much of it, um, but from my impressions of combat, it's definitely far, uh, far better than anything we've seen in the past for Total War Rome 2, mostly because the unit differentiation in prices means that uh, you have to really pick and choose uh, which elite units you're going to bring. You can't just rely on only elite units. It means then that you have to bring a good mix of troops and uh, so in a lot of these battles you'll end up seeing a good variety of troops you can even see here with the Romans whereas usually I could field a good amount of uh, Praetorians and armored legionnaires in this case if I had done that I would have had a much smaller army so I went ahead and added a huge variety so key equites um, principes all sorts of different troops here so I'm really liking that and uh, I haven't really gotten to see exactly which factions are going to be the strongest. I know before they patched the game, uh, or before they released the latest patch, and it was still in beta, I had done some testing showing that the Roman troops ended up beating some of the Gallic troops. So in the patch notes, they said that they actually changed that. The Gallic units got a little bit of buff, Roman units got a debuff, and they played around with the prices. So I'm glad they got that feedback in. Now there are still a couple more glitches that I saw in the game, and that's going to be sometimes on these battles like this, uh, in the preliminary stages when you're deploying your troops, you may see what your opponent is doing. Um, you know, sometimes it's a one-way thing where you can see what they're doing and they can't see what you're doing, or sometimes both of you can see what the opponent is doing for their setup. So that's kind of a weird glitch, not sure why that happened, uh, and I'm going to have to post that on the forums to make sure they patch it. Anyway, something that I've been seeing actually a decent amount of people field is Pontus. Uh, now, of course, my sample size isn't very big, but uh, I have been running into them, and I've seen they've they've been playing very strong, uh, mostly because of um, well, I'll explain. So the, some of the good players that I saw using Pontus were using these bronze shield pikemen as a first line, a good amount of slingers using Pontus's scythe chariots effectively, and then also having their strong cavalry, and so that made a big backbone uh, and a shield using their core pikes. The cavalry can secure the flanks. And then that slinger front that is now uh, even cheaper to procure, it's going to be a good way to pick off any other skirmishers. Uh, but in this battle, I was playing as Rome, and I figured I would set myself uh, set a little trap for my opponent. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You can see my opponent slowly moving forward. So as the Romans, you tend to see me try and take the more dispersed approach. I like to stay mobile, so you can see me here. I'm definitely not deployed in a single line. That's probably the worst way to fight spears. And so what I'm going to be doing is I have this ambush set over here. I'm wary that my opponent might have more guys on his side, like over on this side of the field, but hidden. So I'm not going to rush those guys out just in case he uh, reverse ambushes me. But in any case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing his attention to the left side. Um, two reasons for doing that. One, I want to bring his attention there. Uh, the second reason is that I see that he's actually not very prepared for an assault on that side, so I'm going to go ahead and push hard that way. And an additional reason why I'm going to be moving my skirmishers to the left is it'll give them an opportunity to shoot at the unprotected sides of his uh, spearmen. So 
my main goal right here is going to be to try and bait my opponent to engage and then I'm going to spread out and envelop him. So I guess uh, while we're waiting for the battle to come into play, I'm going to keep talking a bit about the patch. I haven't been able to play too much of the campaign, just been swamped with work and so I'm not really sure how much the campaign has changed. I know they're definitely going and tweaking a lot of things, which is good. I heard sieges are substantially better, but still not quite there yet. And um, yeah, overall, I think it's a great step in the right direction. I'm very happy with the progress of the patch. Multiplayer battles are much more varied. And um, I also heard recently on the forums that people are working on uh, a Rome 2 Realism mod. So hopefully uh, with that in the works and also the uh, mod utility kit being released, we'll see really great stuff in the near future. So stuff seems to be looking up finally for Total War Rome 2, even though it is a long time in the making. Anyways, I wanted to show you what the effect is of having your uh, skirmishers move to the side here. Take a look at this. I got around to the side and I'm shooting diagonal like this in order to hit the unprotected flanks of his men. When you do that, you score tremendous amount of damage on his troops. That's how I recommend you use your skirmishers. Send them out to the front lines here and look how I'm devastating his bronze shields. That's exactly how you want to use your skirmishers. Now something I've seen opposing armies do when they were using Pontus was having a big solid line of, skirm of uh, slingers which would just wreck my velites moving up but in this case I was pretty effective in breaking apart his line concentrate fire now on one of his uh, pike groups moving up and I'm gonna punch a hole through there at the same time my opponent is looking to push on that side I'm gonna go ahead and shore up my defenses there rally my uh, units together and try and confront him there you can also see on the map on the left my ambush is being sprung Take a look at this right here. I've spotted one of his units here is going to be depleted, so that's where I'm going to tell my legionaries to punch through, and the rest are going to fall back. Over here, I make sure to get this charge at the last minute, so I barely missed it, and my opponent is going to charge in with the rest of my men, uh, rest of his men. And take a look right here. I was able to punch through and attack his pikes. They're going to crumble with the rest of these units. I'm going to go ahead and pull back, and the reason for doing that is it just punches a hole straight through his pike wall, and when that happens, the a solid front that his pikes otherwise would have uh, presented to my guys uh, absolutely deteriorates and once you can get around the sides of your pikes that's when they're gonna die now is gonna be the time to reinforce my troops here these guys that kept moving past my legionaries are gonna be attacked from the side and from the front you can see here my legionaries attacking from the left uh, which were facing the front of his troops um, were held up pretty substantially they did not push through the spears so I think there's been some changes to that happy to see that uh, if we were to take note of the battle right here, cavalry going to be able to mop up his troops right here. I'm also sending my general into the fray, and I'm going to keep charging through with my cavalry. Uh, some problems with cavalry I've heard is they still have problems detaching from some of the fights, uh, and also uh, when you issue new commands, they'll stop and then they'll start running again. I also take a look at my um, gladiators on the left. They're going to be engaging one of those pike units. It's absolutely ridiculous. Look at that on the charge. They're going to charge right into the form spears, and they all died. So that just goes to show the stopping power of the pikes. Um, they do pretty good damage, and in this frontal wall against... Uh, very lightly armed troops they will just get melted away I have never seen that I never would have expected that uh, something to be aware of so that's why you definitely want to break up those pike formations so you don't have units just absolutely melt like that something I've been doing in some of my battles is even disengaging my troops that have been pinned by pikes uh, now that does have some problems uh, for your troops because you go ahead and you lose some more men due to uh, obviously turning your back and running away but I found that if the pikes are in uh, phalanx formation they won't be able to chase you very effectively and so it's often better to disengage take a few losses as opposed to fighting the the grinder that is the the phalanx um, anyways yeah the weekend is coming up this battle is coming to an end so hopefully this weekend I'll be able to bring you some more videos uh, I did play a couple multiplayer games today so I've got those videos I can commentate on those which means that hopefully this weekend I can focus on some sort of history video uh, I'm not really sure what I'm going to cover, um, I still haven't really been able to do much as I said because of all the schoolwork I've had, haven't been able to make any progress on the book on Mithridates, so that'll have to wait and see. But if you guys have some stuff you want me to do as in terms of historical videos, something that could be quick, uh, you know I'd, I'd love to do that. Anyways, take a look at this here, you can see the way my opponent 
put his forces together. I think he focused a bit too much on the Pontic Cav. He definitely needed more troops. And that's something I really like about the patch is it kind of punishes players who focus too much on elite veteran units. Um, you want to go more for, for numbers and have a good mix. So I'm definitely liking the changes and I hope you guys enjoyed this battle. I'll be coming out with a couple more uh, facing some more skilled opponents. And uh, yeah. I'll uh, I'll see you guys next time. Hope you can go enjoy it, and also make sure to leave that comment below about what types of history videos you like to see.